Good morning, folks. If you caught my video annotation or the update comment, NASA is now confirming that an interplanetary shockwave impacted our magnetic shield about 25 minutes after yesterday's news video was released. Plasma temperature jumped from 1,000 to over 10,000 Kelvin. Solar wind speed topped 400 kilometers per second, and the density a little more than doubled. We'll come back to this. India in focus today. Extreme hail still destroying crops and even injuring people. The Indian government categorically denies allegations that an explosion took place at the not yet operating Kudan Kulam nuke plant. Barren Islands volcano erupted in a significant way for the first time since the Christmas tsunami in Sumatra set off five years of low-level blasts. Great article here on the crop damage in the United States due to the great drought of 2012. You can switch back and forth between the crops and Beyond that, you can actually click on a state to see their yields in previous years compared to 2012. We'll take a look at a few of them here. This is obviously linked for you below the video with everything else I say and show. At the bottom of the article, they have some great images of the billion dollar disasters from this year. Looking at the Southwest Pacific, the rain was, is, and will be worst in Northern Australia. Same with the thunderstorms, while data suggests New Zealand might be the nicest weather spot on Earth right now. Say it with me, Europe this big blue counterclockwise low, driving the Atlantic moisture along the leading east edge and bringing precipitation as it moves across the continent. Thunderstorms possible in the Mediterranean. For newcomers and those around the world, all the tools to check this stuff for yourself are right below the video in the info box. Click show more. If you want to be informed on your local weather, you'll need to watch out for yourself. In the US, this new link is the map that goes with precipitation totals. Serves me right for not checking their whole website first, but now you got this link too. It's much easier to work with than the precipitation lists. As we've discussed, the big lows have counterclockwise movement in the northern hemisphere when seen from above, meaning the eastern low is pulling south at the western edge while the central low on the U.S.-Canada border is pulling hard to the north. This is the cause of the colder temperature delta from Florida up through Quebec while the central states are warming. By tomorrow, Monday evening, they expect the pressure to look like this, making severe weather at the southeast convergence a real possibility. North Pacific low bringing precipitation to the Canadian coastal zones in waves. Two days ago, had a gamma burst from the Aries constellation. Taurus caught it out his peripheral vision and decided to fire one as well around dinner time last night for the US. The second line on Spaceship Earth and the Muon network both show serious drops in cosmic ray density. These are coinciding timing-wise with the aforementioned interplanetary shockwave that is dying down this morning. Here is SOHO's three-day solar wind data showing that we did take a fairly solid whack. Magnetosphere took his licks though, only had minor plasma penetration with inductions far lighter than they could have been. Our shield barely lost its footing before standing strong. Can't say the same for the solar magnetic fields of the umbral kind, however. Northwest side of the red coronal hole is indecisive, come and go. And this might be why. Yesterday, we took a look at this new group of active regions and said, hey, this could grow or completely disappear. Well, I'm going to go with grow. This is beta gamma already and could actually flare if it manages to hold its form facing the Earth. The southern group of active regions turning in showed her hand and was holding much better hole cards than I expected. Have well-developed umbra, mixing magnetics already, another flare potential. Even when I take a look at the Lone Ranger in the north central area, he appears to have some young recruits at the flank, checking their magnetics as well. The southernmost filament, ripped away from the sun, is seen in 304 angstroms, not coming at Earth. Meanwhile, every moment that this mega filament does not erupt, it turns more and more towards the Earth. Hold on, baby, you got this. It being just three days until the alignments start again, it's kind of a hodgepodge time for quakes. This tends to work best for either long droughts or major upticks. Minor watches are the story now until more factors are present. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.